الحمد لله و شکر لله We wanted to give an account in this uh, course, inshallah ta'ala, about Sufism and Islam, about the position of Sufism among the other uh, Sharia sciences and of the uh, means of distinguishing between uh, the true Sufi and the, or the true Sufi path or Sufi tariqah and the false uh, Sufi path and tariqah both exist and it's worth knowing the difference and uh, to mention uh, or to go through an actual text of the Sufi path uh, after we finish the introduction so we wanted to begin with the introduction a basic introduction uh, based on something that uh, I wrote and I didn't write the, it was an essay that I uh, wrote. Uh, I didn't write it from my own uh, creativity, but rather I uh, restricted myself to what I had heard uh, my own sheikh in the Sufi path, Sheikh Abdurrahman al-Shaghuri answer at various times. Some of the examples and hadith evidence I supplied, but the um, basic thrust of the argument is his. And so I wanted to read this uh, first, and inshallah ta'ala, these are, uh, reading it as a bridge to reach your own uh, questions. And so whoever has a question, inshallah ta'ala, at the top of the hour, uh, will uh, treat some of the questions that we've been asked, inshallah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين we said may Allah have mercy on the hearers and the speaker the primary reality in every muslim's eyes is Allah who is here first and will be here last the universe is a secondary derivative phenomenon from that primary reality. And from this point of view, the world is a text, and Allah is creating us here and revealing to us values and eternal truths through his prophets is its context. What is the world? An ayah. What is it? An ayah or a sign of it? Something that signifies something beyond itself. What? The unity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Divine, revolution, divine revelations there have been as many as the peoples of the earth as Allah tells us in the Quran for since the beginning man has sought to know and to love God some through adoration others through discursive categories of the mind others by direct experience and all of these are involved in direct experience the latter in Islam, the experience, this is called the Sufism. It's called Sufism. And in the words that we will follow in our introduction here, we try to describe its living tradition in the Muslim lands today and its place within the final revelation of Islam. Contemporary Muslims in particular sometimes hear that Sufism is foreign to Islam and wonder about its place among the traditional sciences of the religion. In the present uh, introduction, we'll examine the Sufi path directly from its own sources and let it answer for itself. But perhaps the larger point is to tell readers that they are not mere bodies or bodies with minds, but rather body, mind, and soul, ruh. If we do not know anything about our soul or feel its presence or its growth, it is because our postmodern civilization and culture have done nothing to develop it, but rather let it stagnate. And this is no great wonder, for a civilization without soul has little to give the soul. A point comes in one's life when one realizes that consumerism is not directed towards a higher man and that if one aspires to rise above and not sink below, one must take the matter of, uh, in one's own hands and set out for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is especially at such a point that 
an introduction like the present one that we're about to give will have something to say.